they have a negative framework by which you're already starting because they're looking for you to do something wrong, that's not a place you want to be. Jarvis asked a question. And so Jarvis's background, since I know Jarvis, is an ex-offender and has come out of prison and made a massive difference through his own ministry, has mm -hmm. started a farm. And one of the things that he's always looking mm -hmm. about is, you know, how do people re-enter society? And so his question is, how can ex-offenders build trust with employers when they have a background that immediately turns people off? You know, Jarvis, good for you for one thing. And I would, it, it's an interesting, but actually a really simple question for me, because when I read this and, you know, Jerry was reading it too, I said to myself, so what? And so what I mean by that, Jarvis, is work with someone that just doesn't care about a past title and position or baggage. They care about and they see who you are today. Because if someone is too focused on that and they're not seeing who you are today, then they're starting out in an unhealthy relationship. They're giving themselves a predisposition to watch and find you doing something wrong, which you're going to find. Because you're not perfect, I'm not, no one's perfect. But if they have a negative framework by which you're already starting because they're looking for you to do something wrong, that's not a place you want to be. I would go to a place and organizations and individuals that say, all right, so what? Jarvis, what are you doing for me today? I mean, seriously, I can only relate it to my own podcast. I have people from all kinds of backgrounds, gender, orientation, ethnicity, age. And you know what? I have no clue. I have no clue about anyone because it comes down to what skills you bring into the show. What amazing insights do you have? What did, and most importantly, what did you learn? You know, what do you think about Malcolm X's baggage, background, political leanings or not? I, I have read so many books about him and his life in prison, about how he really dove into study and reflection that changed who he was from before he went into prison. Because the number one thing I have found with human beings to forge trust, it's really, really simple. Transparency, vulnerability, and humility. You know, when you can demonstrate those three things, and then when you combine it with competence in that what you're doing, the skill set you're bringing forward, why wouldn't you trust this person? Because they're willing to share all the things that are in their lives, they're willing to share the things they've learned and they're sharing with you the process they put in place to overcome those challenges. I'll hire that guy, left day or woman any, any day of the week because I'll trust them. Because if they're willing to share with me all the things that went sideways in your life, you're going to share everything, the good, the bad, the ugly. I can trust that because that's now empowering me with choice about how to move forward because I know exactly where you stand and I now know exactly what your skill set is. And so I would say... Focus on the people that see you that way and see the world that way. And so there's lots of employers out there and Jarvis, you're an incredible human being. And you know, the work that you are doing is inspiring. And so find the people who say, Hey, okay. Right. I get it. If we all get judged on our, the worst day or the worst decision we made, none of us stand up to that. And so we're all going to have moments where we've broken trust or made poor decisions. I'm going to remember you a very, very long time. I mean, literally, I mean, just think about that. And anyone li listening to the show now, you all are going to remember Jarvis most likely more than anything else from this conversation because of that. Because again, transparency, openness, honesty, vulnerability. Bang. Bang.